Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast, produced by Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. I am Bob, and I'm exactly one half of the Bob and Brad team. And today I am joined by a repeat guest. He is his second appearance, uh, Steve August. He's a physiotherapist out of New Zealand, um, quite accomplished. Our previous uh, podcast was on costochondritis. If you have that, check it out because we have the answers for you. Uh, today, we're going to talk more about eye hunch, eye hunch, which is, uh, to give you a little hint, it's about posture and the importance of uh, uh, it, it, role it plays in pain control and such. So uh, please join me and welcoming Steve uh, back to the program. Steve August, welcome back to the program, a two-timer. Thank you very much, Bob. <sighs> So last time we met, we spent a majority of the time talking about costochondritis, a very relevant topic. And uh, if you have costochondritis, you really should check it out. I really think it's the answer. I mean, um, Brad has costochondritis and he's had great results from this. And he, you know, he went to the uh, emergency room three times, I believe. So it took him a while before he blew, he must have uh, stuck with it, and uh, but today we're going to talk about eye hunch. And is this a term you came up with? Um, actually, yes. There, there's there's lots of other terms, but there were three of us at a conference in a hotel room drinking beer. <laughs> was, Imagine somebody, that. We, <laughs> we can't remember who it was, and somebody <laughs> said, "What about what about calling it the eye hunch?" Because it's it, it it does get the idea across. Um, it's essentially known by a lot of names, like text neck, and it pretty much covers yes, upper cross yes. syndrome. But it, it's basically um, the 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 hunching forward, uh, bending your upper thoracic spine forwards, and and the chin poking out, bending over something. Um, but that's become such a tsunami with the new light technologies like iPhones and uh, rather smartphones and tablets and laptops, um, that the eye hunch gets the idea across of this is so much a function of the new technology. So that's well, why we called it the eye hunch. We should say too that um, you actually have a Wikipedia entry on this uh, article on this eye hunch, and it's really in depth and really well worth your while to, to check it out. So, so what the, can, if you want to talk a little bit about eye hunch and the role it plays in uh, contributing to musculoskeletal pain? Right. Well, firstly, the numbers really are enormous and I'm not unfairly targeting um, cell phones, um, tablets and smartphones, but um, there, there is a, um, a huge connection. Um, so essentially, it's the problem you get with hunching over things. And the problem with um, uh, cell phones, um, tablets, and laptops is that you cannot set them up ergonomically correctly because you can't separate the screen from the keyboard. So um, you really have to hunch your thoracic spine, your upper back, forwards to use the things. Now, I, I'm not at all running down the technology. You know, I um, love my iPhone. Right. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful access to all sorts of stuff. But um, there is a spin-off. And you can get um, technologically driven medical conditions. Um, there used to be a problem back in the 1980s, which was recorded as cell phone ear. And this was the um, the original cell phones, which were about the size and weight of a brick. And they right. had uh, little um, aerials that you pulled out. And uh, apparently in the 1980s, it's in the British Medical Journal, um, the phone would go off about four o'clock in the morning and the aspiring yuppie would um, um, put his arm out, um, pick up this thing and <clears throat> perforate his eardrum with the oh my gosh. Uh, aerial of <laughs> off the oh, end wow. of the cell phone. So it was called cell phone ear. Sure. Um, so that is an example of technology driving a medical problem. Okay, the thing with desktop computers 
which um, uh, is great, is that you can set them up ergonomically correctly right. because you can set the screen at eye level and the keyboard at elbow level. And that's pretty much what your spine's um, good at doing, sitting upright with the head balanced above the shoulders and, um, and using the technology isn't a problem. The problem comes in um, with um, specifically cell phones, tablets, and um, laptops. Unless you buy an extra screen or an extra keyboard, which hardly anyone ever does because then you lose the portability. Right. Um, the screen is then sort of attached to the keyboard. So to use the, uh, the keyboard, you really have to bend forwards. Now, there's nothing new about bending forwards. Um, hairdressers do it, chefs, surgeons, um, uh, process workers on conveyor belts, anything like that. Bending forward is a, um, um, a common thing and tended to give a degree of problems when you've done a lot of it. All that's changed is that everybody's now um, in the computer survey world is using the, the cool small devices. Um, and so they're doing a lot more bending forward. And so neck pain, headache, um, upper back pain has just skyrocketed in about the last decade or so since everybody started using these things, which require them to, to, to bend forward. Now, I have to say at this point, um, if I'm explaining this to a patient, it's almost like their pupils are enlarging and you can see the thought balloon. Um, right. he's, he's trying to take away my, my, my cell yes. phone, quick, yes. bite his throat out. Um, and I, I'm not at all... Um, running down the technology per se. Um, it's wonderful technology and I use it myself. But it's a bit like buying a car. Um, if you don't put oil in the engine from time to time, then it's going to seize. And so you can use the technology, no problems, but you can't rely on the ergonomic, uh, a good ergonomic setup right. um, to, to use it um, well for your spine um, and therefore um, the way around it we came up with was let's get the spine moving well well supported um, flexible all the good things so it'll handle um, hours of bending forward um, working on the small devices um, so that, that that's the general approach and the other thing is, this is all really well mapped out. Um, like bending forward uh, is easy to understand because there's a, um, a very small collection of things that go on when you've spent a lot of time bending forwards. And the, the, um, our eyes are around the front and our hands are around the front. And so to use the small devices, you have to bend forward. Now, stepping back a bit, what our spines are good at is being upright, um, walking, moving with the, um, the heart rate up, um, pumping blood to the muscles, looking around for food and danger in, in the old days. And, um, you know, we're good at that. We can do that pretty much indefinitely. That's totally different from somebody sitting, um, sitting down, sedentary, um, the heart rate not up because the, um, the muscles aren't working hard. Right. And in a flex position, bending forward, um, often for hours and hours and hours on end. Um, I think uh, there's something like 3.2 billion gamers in the world these right. days. And on average, uh, they can spend, I, I think the higher average is about eight hours a day on the small devices. And we just weren't built for that. Right. Um, so, so you do get uh, a collection of very logical, very easy to understand problems that go on. And if you're wanting to treat the problem when it's there or stop the problem developing, um, you need to um, uh, basically tick all the boxes of a, a little collection of things. Um, so what goes, just to break it down, so if you're bending forward, um, the first thing that happens is your head is um, out on a cantilevered position. It's in, it's in front of your right. chest. Um, so now, like this. In a, 
Exactly that. Um, that's brilliant, Bob. Um, <laughs> in a in a, a perfect neck, the um, uh, your head sits above your shoulders. Like if you want an indication, the, the earphone ears. sits yeah. above the point yeah. of your shoulder. Okay. Yeah. Well, I now see um, teenagers. Uh, I, I live near a university in New Zealand, and I see teenagers walking past my place with the back of the head sitting in front of the chest. And it's it's frozen like that. It's frozen in that in that hunch. This is the sort of thing we used to see thirty years ago in people in their seventies and eighties. And I, I have and, to con concur. I've been seeing the same things in yeah. very very young people, and they're immobile in this spot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it it really has been a tsunami. Um, there's been work done in New Zealand just on. Um, um, essentially, um, physio clinics, chiropractic clinics, osteopathic clinics uh, are essentially swamped with this problem. It is sure. this large. And uh, the US would be exactly the same as New Zealand, actually, if not more so. Um, so anyway, so what goes on? Bending forward. All right. Um, as soon as you shift your head um, forwards, the load on the neck goes up enormously. Now, it doesn't sound like much. Um, cell phones don't weigh much, right. but it's not the weight of the cell phone. Um, if you're bending forward at 60 degrees, the load on the neck has gone up five times. That's not a little bit. That's five times that's a lot. what it is when the head's sitting above the shoulder. So that's seriously not minor. Um, the head hasn't um, changed in weight but the angle and the load on the neck has changed. Um, I generally get patients to um, balance a broom above their, um, uh, uh, on, on the palm of their hand. And I'm sure we've all done this and you can balance it fairly easily um, vertically. Then hold it out at about 45 degrees, holding the broom handle and you can't hold it for more than a minute or two. The weight of the broom hasn't changed but the moment arm, the load on, in the, in the case of the head, the neck, has just gone way up. So just that position puts immense extra load on the spine. Okay, so... Yeah, Brad, Brad, Brad and I actually demonstrated that by, we have a bowling ball. And oh, a, I've seen that, a yeah. Stick, yeah, and you lean, if you hold the bowling ball straight up, it's very easy to hold it with your hands. But yeah. as soon as you lean it forward, it's very difficult on your wrists and hands. That's perfect. That's exactly what um, I was talking about. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. Um, so, so what happens is all this extra load. So the muscles around the back of your head, um, around the back of your neck, do strengthen up, but they also strain and get tight and get a bit scarred with all the straining that's going on. So they get shortened. Now, yeah. the second thing that goes on is because you're in that cantilevered position, um, you're not using the muscles around the front of your neck much at all. So they get weak. Now, these are the muscles that hold your chin in. And so when they get weak, the chin pokes out. So that's the second thing that goes on. Um, as well, the thoracic spine, your upper back, upper back, middle back, is bending forward because you're bending forward. So you're starting to get into this um, picture of a, a hunched, upper back, chin poking out, um, to still look up, um, you're needing to use these strong muscles around the back of the neck, but they're also shortened now and scarred. And when you get into that position, every single joint in the neck is compressed, um, squashed. And of course, that sets you up for them locking acutely. Um, it'll cause headaches, in an older person, if the holes where the nerves come out are already a bit um, tightened and smaller, sure. that compresses yeah. them further. It's just everything snowballs. Um, we, we we're essentially built for being upright, moving around, and essentially in this position where we're wedging everything in. So... Is it, am I jumping ahead to say that also there's compression on the abdomen and your digestion is affected? I mean, basically, yeah. Um, if everything, uh, you're also getting tight breathing, pec muscles around the right. front. Um, 
the more you end up hunching um, in the thoracic spine, uh, the more the rib joints around the back get tight and they need to move to let you breathe in and out. So everything sort of compresses. And I think it's why you get so many um, titles for this particular right. composite problem. Um, you know, text neck, the eye hunch, um, upper cross syndrome, um, which is mostly just referring to the muscles, but there's, there's joints involved as well. Um, because it's, it, it's a, a common human problem. Um, the, the, the only thing that's different with the um, laptops, tablets, and smartphones is there's just more of it um, right. in a way that there hasn't been so universally ever before, really. Um, so it's a problem. And um, the, I mean, one of the components that goes on is headache. Um, now, there was some really nice work done way back in the 1980s by an Australian anatomist who was in injecting um, irritating substances into all of the top structures in the neck. Sure. Um, so that's the C12 joint, C01 joint, uh, the muscle attachments on the occiput, C23 disc, and basically creating a headache um, in living people, um, which he was then taking away by putting um, analgesias down the same needle. It's called injection diagnosis, and it's a very high um, 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 validity uh, sure. in, in, involved. Um, and it, it's totally clear cut. You stress any of those things, you get a headache. Um, and the headaches are awful. I've had them myself, and it's a bit right. difficult to be caring about patients when you, you've you've got someone kicking you in the back of the head. I, I always um, find that amazing that people can work with those types yeah. of headaches because when I get them, which is rare, I, I'm like, yeah. my God, these are debilitating. I mean, so. yes. <laughs> um, so those they really are. So those injections, uh, is it? the belief in that it's from the joint or is it like the greater occipital nerve that goes around? It's, it's basically any of the structures. So the sure. joint and C23 disc and, um, and just the attachments of the upper trapezius onto the occiput. Uh, so the muscle attachments there as well. It's, it's not a nerve root referral, like a, a low back where maybe you have a disc pushing on the side right, nerve, right. send the pain down the leg. Okay. Uh, it's, it's more a confusion of signals. Um, and the, the brain, although they're, they're being, it's like a fire, arm be, a fire alarm being short circuited. Although the, um, the problem is in the top of the neck, the brain is essentially feeling the pain uh, it's a referred pain over the head, but because it's in the head, you call it a headache. And they are pretty awful. Um, but yeah, we often they're, call, they're, call them neck headaches. But um, yeah. can you describe a typical pattern? So people, if they have that pattern, they might want to look towards the, their upper neck. Sure. Well, basically, um, if you're, if you, there's two main types of headaches, migraine and call them these things, musculoskeletal right. headache or tension headache. Yeah. Um, if it's the neck headache, uh, it's really, you, you tend to get an origin round about the top of the neck, base of the skull. And just depends what structures are particularly under load. Um, you can get it coming through over the eye or it can wind around the side um, um, out above the, uh, above the ear. Um, or you can just get them straight in through here. They, they spread all over the place. The, the one big difference is that with a true vascular migraine, um, you, you get this twiddly, um, um, uh, shimmering light patch in your vision called scotoma, sure. which is essentially pressure to do with the, um, the blood supply in the brain. And you don't get that with the neck headaches. Gotcha. But other than that, there's a huge overlap. And they often, um, they're called a tension headache, but it sort of implies that if you take the tension off, everything will be fine. And, or a stress headache, and you take the stress off, everything will be fine. Right. But it's gone past that. If, if the joints are frozen up 
and the muscles are scarred up and it's jammed, you'll keep getting them no matter how relaxed you are. Sure. Um, so you really need to 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 deal to the um, the structural tightness, which gotcha. is yeah. Um, so they're horrible, and um, you can treat the specific bit there. But if you don't stand back and say, yeah, but why is it so much under load there? Um, then you only get a temporary relief if that. Sure. And the and what we're describing with the um, the whole eye hunch thing with the um, the position of the um, whole upper spine and the chin poking out, that's what's causing the loading, which is then causing the headache. So really, we we think the way to um, get a, a long term lasting answer is to is to pull the spine back to what we all had when we were we were children, um, which is everything moving fine, everything well supported, um, nothing um, abnormally under load and freezing up. So, Steve, we were talking before the show about some of the other effects of the eye hunch psychological, physiological. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I look, I think this is fascinating because it's not part of my training. And I thought it's so too. I, yeah, uh, it's something I stumbled into. Um, to cut long story short, I got talking to uh, Dr. and Professor Amy Cuddy, um, who's the, I think, the prof of psychology in Harvard. Um, and uh, Amy's pretty impressive. Um, uh, she's got the uh, second most watched TED talk um, with 62 million views. Wow. Um, uh, and she's just lovely. Um, she's, uh, she's the person who was looking at body language and um, she came up with sort of power posing. We yeah, were doing I saw, Superman poses. I saw, and, I saw and, her. Uh, I saw that video. All right. Um, well, I, I was, we ended up um, communicating and we had this hilarious exchange where I was going, I never thought of that. And Amy was going, I never thought of that. <laughs> and <laughs> we'd been basically looking at the same problem uh, in my case from uh, physio, physical therapist, musculoskeletal pain side. And in Amy's case from um, psychological, um, sociological side of, uh, of body language. And um, I'm, I'm very impressed with how definite the research is and how concrete um, uh, all of this side of things is. I, I must admit, I had thought it was going to be a bit vague and fuzzy, and it's not at all. Sure. If, you're, um, if you become hunched, so your thoracic spine, it's not just a matter of bending forward, it's frozen like that. And the thoracic spine now is tight enough that you, you cannot straighten up. Uh, nobody has enough leverage once the joints are tight enough. You, you have to have an external force. Anyway, so you've got a, a hunching thoracic spine and you've got the muscle weakness around the front, the chin's poking out. You're sending a cringe message. Um, you're, you're sending a message of, um, I'm not so confident. I'm not so self-assured. I'm not so worthwhile being listened to. Um, I'm, I'm, um, I, I'm submissive. All of this horrible stuff and it's this instant silent body language message that you're sending to everyone you meet and that's uh boyfriends girlfriends um, sure. school um work um anyone on the street and you, you you're sending a message one way or another if you've if you're there with perfect posture the message you're sending is I'm in control. Um, I'm I'm self-assured. I know what I'm doing. I'm attentive. I'm I'm there. I'm grounded. I'm listening to you. Now say something useful. It, it it's just so instant. And you were talking just before we started um, something I hadn't heard of about the um, I think it was a a, a victim um, posture. Right. They call it the Vic. Well, it, criminals would watch people, and they call it the Vic walk. Like uh, these were the ones that they they would choose to uh, try to exploit, uh, basically be, because yeah they look they had the hunched over posture and and in fact Brad uh, used to teach a self defense class for martial mm -hmm. arts and he mm -hmm. would teach people when you walk on the street straight posture and you look people in the eye and don't even try to avert and really look self confident and right by so. 
They're going to leave that, you look, alone. That, that's fascinating. I, I had I didn't know that, but it ties in totally with exactly what yes. uh, Amy was saying. Um, so so there's, there are really major um, implications, not just the musculoskeletal pain with this. Um, I, I, I think it's fascinating. The pain and, is the uh, pain is enough. That's for sure. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, and also you, you you think back to school, um, and this bothers me. Um, I, I've mentioned it on the Costochondritis video as well. But you think back to school. The tall kids in school so often would tend to hunch that a was, bit to, to, to try and... That, I wondered about that. That was me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, this is perfectly natural. You try and fit in. Yeah. What I am definitely dismayed about is the number of um, young women that I've treated, say, in, the, in, the, in their 30s. And one of the questions you ask is, where did it all start from? And they've got this whole headache, pain, I yeah. hunch. And, uh, and, and they would say, look, started when I hit school and um, um, uh, hit puberty or rather puberty sure. hit them, um, started growing breasts, got, were shy, got comments from the guys, got looks from the guys, whatever. And really it, the hunching started then and the yes. pain started then from school. Um, and I, I, I'm just a bit appalled by this. I have two daughters um, who you would say actually have an aggressively upright posture. <laughs> They've been trained correctly. <laughs> Very good. But, but it does mean that um, you've got a bit of a tendency just because you're female to, to go down this track. And one of the things that comes through as well in the last decade or so is the amount of the, the, the psychologically um, depression, um, right. use of antidepressants, um, horrible stuff like, um, I think, even suicide. Um, all of this awful stuff um, hits young women, girls, young women, twice as much as guys. And nobody seems to know why. And I, I really wonder if there's a, a factor here that nobody else has, or no one's really thought of. Well, but anyway, I, I had um, read about the, you know, the vagus nerve being compressed and its mm. effect on anxiety and depression. And I don't know all the physiological reasons, but yeah, yeah. I think there's definitely a tie in with all yeah. what we're seeing. Well, and taking the positive view, I mean, one of the things you can do, and I, I've, I've sort of noticed this, um, and also I get feedback from my daughters and various others. If you want to be noticed when you walk into a room, you walk in with perfect posture. Exactly. It's nothing to do with high heels or, um, um, you know, eyeshadow or anything like that. Um, if you walk in with perfect posture, you get noticed. Um, right. I... I do remember many years ago, I, I went part of the way through teacher's college before deciding I was scared of standing up in front of large groups sure. of, of kids, um, long before physio. Um, but we were being taught um, how to control class. Sure. And the person who was the absolute master um, was about five foot two, um, um, blonde, small, perfect posture. And... It, it, it much smaller than than the big bulky guys, and she would walk in perfect posture, look us all in the eye, and we just you know we it just was, sat there. We were you know it, it was impressive. You know who and was in control? It was just just yeah, yeah just yeah. totally there, totally attentive, and you knew she'd respond if you if you as a as a right. classmate if you did anything wrong. But um, it does seem to me that what people can do is work away at getting back to perfect posture. Even if you're shy, whatever, this is something you can do at home. It's not that difficult. The, the, the steps are clear enough and you can just work away at it. And it's something you can change in yourself, which is going to have absolute real world um, um, benefits that I think are, are really quite huge um, ongoing, you know, for the rest of your life. Well, so it's not just avoiding pain and headache. It's right. also where you are as a person. Yeah, let's let's talk about that, Steve. So your response to correct eye hunch was the creation of the back pod. I have a, yep. a box right here. This is the device right here. And you apparently <laughs> I, are too. I, I, I never go very far away <laughs> from them. Um, right. So, so uh, you know, 
it's no uh, surprise. Brad and I are really big fans, and uh, we've mentioned it many, many times because it. And we do not mention things unless we think they help. We we get approached Appreciate daily by. 10, 15 companies asking us to have their products on them. And we mm. say no, no, no to a vast majority. And, uh, you know, I think because Brad had Costo and I mean, I was a skeptic, to be honest with you. And, um, yep. you know, our, our resp response was always stretch and strengthen. And, yep. but uh, we weren't adding the mobilization in there. And yep. it, it, it just wouldn't hold. It just, it just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't get me to where I needed to be. And uh, now I'm addicted to this. My wife's addicted to it. Um, I, I won't go a day without using it. And uh, hmm. so I've given away dozens. I mean, I paid for it even. <laughs> so um, do you want to maybe talk about the device a little bit and how it works? And Sure. Well, um. Basically, um, I, I had been using fulcrums as a, uh, a, a physiotherapist, about the same as a physical therapist in um, in the US. Sure. But, I, but in, in New Zealand, we do do uh, we do shade into a lot more um, specific manipulation, right? Uh, like osteopathic okay. manipulation, yes, chiropractic, and and so we've got that extra range of of techniques, and um, uh, and and I would see the same sort of things you were seeing on my patients that we we do strengthening and we do stretching but uh it's a matter of leverage um it will it will take you you know a good distance but if things are tighter than that then um you just haven't got enough leverage um to to really free them up further just with your own actions um because you your spine's a, a little bit like a snake with um uh, lots of moving um, segments, and if you've got a tight bit, any any movement that the sna that the snake does um, uh, can't get much leverage on the tight bits because all the other bits are moving really well. Sure. Um, so so something that um, uh, was um, focused and specific on the um, on the the tightest bits was really necessary if they were tight enough, and so often they were. So um, dropping back to the eye hunch briefly, the, the underlying problem that you had to do something about was the, um, the curved, hunched, fixed um, upper thoracic spine, um, upper back, middle back, and you again, had to have enough leverage. Again, we're talking about yeah. you know, right below the neck, the upper back. Yeah. 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 Well, when that gets tight enough and, and that happens fast, then it's not a matter of, of we'll just sit up straight because right. you can't do it. There's, uh, for, for people watching this, there's, um, there's a couple of things you can do to check it out yourself that I find it very easy. First thing is um, good old um, you know, smartphone. Yes. Yes. Get someone to take, turn yourself side on, just sitting or standing and get someone to take a side on photo. Now, in a perfect neck, your earlobe will be sitting roughly above the point of your shoulder. Um, people don't, you don't see this in a mirror because you're looking straight at a mirror. So you can't see what you look like side on. But we've all got the technology now. Just take a side photo and see what it looks like. Second one um, is then take a second photo while you, you, you're stretching your head backwards. So you're going, you know, like that. Now, if the uh, what you should see in a in a, a freely moving neck is a general curve as you bend your your head back, so the curve running all the way from the base of the skull um, down past your shoulders and into the middle of your back between your shoulder blades, it's it's not a perfectly even curve because the thoracic spine still tends to bend forward a little bit, but it's a, a, a general backwards curve with each segment of the spine moving a bit, like a snake. So you get a, a, a general sure. backwards movement. What you see with the eye hunch is that that bending forward um, upper back curve doesn't change. It just stays fixed, rigid, and you actually get a, um, a hinging effect at the bottom of your neck as you bend backwards. 
um, because all the, the um, action now has to take place down the bottom of the neck and the, the thoracic spine isn't moving at all. If everything was moving freely, you'd get movement at each segment all the way sure. down to the middle of your shoulder blades, um, sure. down to about T7. Um, but with the, it, it's such um, a clear giveaway. It's like the, 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 the hunched forward upper back just stays frozen. And at that stage, um, oh, we call it swan necking because it looks a bit like a sure. swan's neck yeah. um, yeah. as, you, as you bend backwards. So once you've got to that, no exercise you can do yourself, no strengthening is going to shift it on you. You haven't got the leverage. All that's going to happen is that the, the bits that can move, like the ones in the neck, will start to move more and more excessively, strengthening isn't going to make any difference. Um, you know, I've treated the um, the serious guys from the gym who come in with right. you know, delta, deltoids the yeah. size of watermelons, um, and they're still hunched forward and um, and frozen like that, in spite of all these huge muscles. Um, so it's not strengthening is is not wrong. It's nothing. You know, it's it's part of the solution, but if it's tight enough then the only way you're going to shift that is with an external force. Now, you can come in with manipulation, um, which isn't putting anything back in place or anything like that. It's just like cracking your knuckles. It's, it's banging the hinges free momentarily and it'll unlock them. Um, and you, you get these nice, fast, instant improvements. But, and it's a big but, what's holding the spine together um, is a material called collagen. And that's what makes up your, your ligaments and there's little bags around each joint called a joint capsule and fascia. And it, it, there's a great morass of this stuff which holds your skeleton together. Uh, muscles just move it around. This is, this is what holds it together. And it, it's amazingly tough. Uh, it's stronger by weight than steel wire. So it, it's got to be strong because you, you're protecting the spinal cord and the nerves sure. in there. Okay. So you cannot stretch that stuff out in a split second. So even if you unlock the uh, frozen segments of the spine with manipulation, say, um, then um, the, the surrounding stiffened, shortened collagen, which is frozen down around the immobile joints, is just going to freeze it up again. And you do get that uh, cliche with traditional chiropractic where you go and they bang the things free. Um, but then, you know, a week later, everything's frozen up again. So they say, oh, well, we'll do it again. And we just don't see that as a, um, a sufficiently good long-term answer. Right. Um, so the way you get to keep them free is you stretch out the collagen. But the collagen's so strong that you really need um, a reasonable leverage to do it. And, it. and like stretching a hamstring, it's got to be a long, sustained, strong stretch. So this, this is a long roundabout way of getting back to <clears throat> why we built the, the, the back pod the way we did. Right. Um, if the, the, the practical home solution for stretching the, t the stiffened, tight, amazingly tough material around a tight spine is to, to lie back on something. And um, there are all sorts of things out there. This is what we started out. Uh, uh, it's, <laughs> a, it's a little wheat bag. We used to call it the kitty bonker. Um, sure. my, I, my, I taught my daughter Kitty to sew and um, age 10, she would sew these things up and then we'd, we'd pack them out with wheat. What's it? Oh, wheat. Okay. <laughs> so it's close packed wheat and sure. you could lie back on it and your upper body weight's providing the force, but it's, it's uh, curving the spine backwards the way sure. it needs to go over this little fulcrum. And um uh, Kitty was, I was paying Kitty, I think about a dollar a time <laughs> and she had more, more, more pocket money than anyone in her class. And then she <laughs> nice. held out for an increase and took it up to $2. So <laughs> she definitely, had, definitely had me over a barrel and knew it. Sure. Um, so, so, it, so that's the fulcrum approach and you and, um, Brad have, um, done, uh, various, um, suggested various types of fulcrum exactly the same principle and um, and they're all good and they all work. Um, 
it's it, what you're well, after. This is works not, better. I mean, I have to well, say this works much better. It does. Yeah. Um, uh, look, every everything that helps to stretch that stuff is going to help, but you do need enough leverage. Uh, if you haven't got that, it's like trying to push a brick with a feather. It's just not going to move. And so we were looking at something that would give enough leverage. And what, what we came up with was the, the back pod. Um, uh, it, I have to say, it, I, I have a business partner, Andrew Wallace, who's um, brilliant. And Andrew pretty much hit it in, uh, in uh, hit the bullseye first time out with what we came up with. I, I told Andrew what we needed, but what he came up with this is much, much better than I'd envisaged. Um, so what's different is that um, for a start, it's got a stable base because it's flat. Because oh, wow. if you're lying on a ball or a foam roller, um, they're not stable. So your muscles automatically can't relax fully. Sure. And that, which is, which is fine if you want to bring in abdominal strengthening. And uh, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a, good, a good thing for some reasons. But right. if you're trying to stretch this collagen, you want the muscles re as relaxed as possible. And you can't do it on an unstable object. So, so that's why we've got a flat bottom. Um, secondly, the, the core, the blue bit, is polycarbonate, um, which is just amazingly tough. It's not just plastic. It, it's what they use in the jet windshields of uh, fighter jets, like the so F-22 Raptor. You could, drive, you could drive a vehicle over this. And it, yeah, we, uh, we, we did that. We, yeah, we drove so. a BMW over it for, uh, to yeah. test it for um, Europe and uh, a sure. Duke Cherokee to test it for America. And, <laughs> and, you know, gotcha. fun. So anything which is too squashy hasn't got enough leverage. Gotcha. So, uh, um, so the unyielding core does give us a serious amount of leverage. The, the, the green bit on top is just cushioning to make it a bit easier. But then we actually go um, uh, in, in the instructions, um, we're saying if you're too tight, start off with a few pillows under your head right. so you can um, grade the stretch so it's not too sore. Um, the, the, the one problem we've got um, has been, I've got to say this again, uh, usually young American males, hurling themselves on the back pod, not reading the instructions and going, yeah. oh, it's too sore, it's too hard, I can't use it. Now, if all of those hinges are moving fine, then all you feel is a, is a satisfying stretch. And it feels really good because it is the right thing for it and it's got enough leverage. Um, but if you are really tight, which means you need the stretch and you try and do the stretch all in one go, and I was just hurl yourself onto the back pod, then it'll just be too sore to do. So all you have to do is grade it so that it's it's an uncomfortable stretch, uh, a bit uncomfortable, um, not a big deal, um, right. um, but very much like stretching a tight hamstring. Um, if, you, if you've got hamstrings that are so tight you can't touch your knees, you're not going to get down to the floor in one split second. Right. Um, it's going to take a few weeks at least just doing a bit day by day by day, and you just give it a reasonable stretch each time. So that's been about the hardest thing we've had to try and get across. Um, anyway, but uh, uh, I want to say, you, I want to say this, Steve. Yeah. This is an excellent booklet, and it's uh, oh. thirty some pages. And my wife was so mad at me because I basically told her to go ahead, get on it, <laughs> tough it out, and then she reads the booklet and goes. My gosh, what's wrong with you? I, you're supposed to start off with a pillow, and and she goes, "That feels so much better." And, and she, so I'm uh, one of those guys. I'm guilty. I, I thought, well, I'm a, I'm a completely on it. So why can't she? Well, so, but it, it really it goes into great detail. You know how to use yeah. it and the progression, and and it's really right. Uh, uh, well, right. um. And the, the, the third reason um, is that we, we made it in this hemi-elliptical shape um, so that we can get the ribs because um, the ribs uh, attach onto the spine at the back and those joints can freeze up as well. And if they freeze up, then you can't take a full breath in because right. the, those rib hinges need to be moving to... Um, you know, to simply allow your lungs to fill fully. 
And if the rib cage is too tight to do that, then you are not getting as much oxygen into your blood vessels or um, brain as you should be. So this is relevant to just about everything, um, um, health, um, exercise, cardiovascular, anyone working underwater, um, various respiratory conditions. Um, it, it's really quite large. And um, so the, the, the shape that Andrew came up with was this curved shape, um, which is the right shape for squeezing in between the spine and the inside edge of your shoulder blade, which is where the curve of the ribs are. So if you can get the point of the back pod in there, then you're actually doing a rib stretch. And you just simply can't do that with most other things. Right. Um, so um, in terms of the actual design, um, uh, it, I also asked for something that um, you can do a mild stretch because the curve along the, um, the, the, the top um, um, edge really the, the top surface is milder and then you turn it on um, uh, across your spine and it's a much sharper curve oh, I didn't know that. there yeah so you so you're getting a stronger stretch even though there's no moving parts you've oh, got a, yeah. a mild setting and a stronger setting so it, it works quite well but the um, I did say to Andrew look I, I'm still a bit amazed Andrew pretty much hit it in the sweet spot first time out and we're, we're scared to change it because it's it's working really right. well um but I, I did say to andrew look the curve is just perfect how did you get that and andrew likes um fast cars so i said well actually he said um that is the 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 rear um um uh, cross-section view of a, a classic porsche 911 oh of course so oh, that, that that's where it came from so perfect perfect <laughs> you know it's a designer joke anyway um you know, i want to mention too steve that uh, we didn't mention this that if you're having shoulder pain this uh, could very well be the cause of that um through its yeah. connection and and in fact uh, you know, most of my shoulder patients, I start with uh, yeah. uh, correcting that. Yeah. So. Yes. Um, well, I mean, you can use the word shoulder, and everybody knows it means the sort of the ball right. and the socket joint right. in through here. But in in practical terms, um, it's all interrelated. And um, if, if I remember my um, original physio, um, something like. Um, Two thirds of of the um, the movement of lifting your shoulder takes place at the at the ball and socket joint right. of the shoulder itself, and then about uh, one, uh, one less third, third yeah. um, happens at the, where the scapula around the back yeah. winds up as well. You mean shoulder last, shoulder blade? Shoulder blade for the layperson. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um, and then, but the last ten percent is is actually movement at the rib joints on the spine. So if they're tight, then you're losing that amount of movement there, and therefore there's more load on all the other bits and pieces. Yes, yes. Um, so it, it's just intimately connected functionally, even though you can split it up verbally into shoulder and back, but they, 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 they flow into each other. So, Yeah, yes. I found for me, these are the three things it did for me. Um, one, it limited the pain that I had between the shoulder blades and mm -hmm. I would get it every so often. And, mm. uh, two, it would increase my thoracic motion, my chest motion for golf, which is very yeah. important to me, but three, yes. uh, it did increase my shoulder range of motion. I, w I was yeah. especially tight on the left and, uh, yeah. it, ca it came back to, to with a normal. Yeah. So. Well, well, I, I, I just think this is, almost universally common. I mean, it's so common because we're all doing things with our hands. Um, you're getting strong on the pecs on the front. We're, we're, our eyes are on the front. We're bending forward. That whole upper um, shoulder girdle tends to get tight. Um, it, it, it's just such a, a common thing. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I see it as a sort of the underlying basis of so many specific problems which then sit on top of that. But but standing back, this is the overview. And it's just so common that those sort of things get tight. And it it really is quite difficult to get, um, you know, enough 
leverage in there to get them back to what they used to be. Um, but, you know, I when I was reviewing some of the um, literature before we um, uh, before we talked, um, you know, I, I saw a comment somewhere um, where it says, you know, the thoracic spine, um, you know, you get hunched as you get older. Well, I, I don't think that's the case because I've seen not many, but enough patients who are definitely elderly who are still straight up and down. Right. And my um, uh, daughter Kitty's husband's grandmother, Audrey, who's wonderful, um, who's 85 now, um, walks like a dancer and has perfect posture. Um, I've, I've just got her permission to put up a photo on, the, on our website. Um, and she was a dancer when she was younger. My, my point being that um, the, the hunching, I think, because of the patients I've seen who aren't hunched, I've seen them for other things, um, the, the, the hunching is a, a, an effect of a cumulative bending forwards. And, and just recently, we've had this big acceleration with the small devices, but essentially right. cumulatively bending forwards, not aging. Um, it looks like aging because it tends, you tend to get more of it as people get older, but that's because they're bending forward all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, fact, my, we did a video on uh, the fact if you want to look older <laughs> or you want to look younger, yeah. if you can regain your straight posture, people are going to think you're younger. I mean, automatically. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and that brings back to my comment. If you want to get noticed, you have perfect posture. Right, um, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Andrew and I were, were actually lecturing at a conference in, um, in in Auckland, in New Zealand, you know, where the Orcs come from. Anyway, um, uh, a few years ago, and we were at the airport waiting to fly out, and we were having a cup of coffee. And there was a, um, uh, a, a young New Zealander, I think she was probably about 18 or so, was serving. And I said, uh, I'm, I'm a physio, you know, you, right. you'll be the same. I, I can't not notice how people move and exactly. what muscles they use. And all. You, you know, it's twisted kicks. You, you, you get sort of warped into yeah. just noticing all the time. <laughs> anyway, and she was wandering around um, serving coffee at tables, what have you, with perfect posture. And I said to Andrew, look at that. And I've, I've sucked Andrew, as a, who's a design engineer, into this way of looking at things as well. And he's going, sure. wow, that's fabulous. Yes, isn't it? We suddenly realized what we sounded like. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah. actually, we were just looking at the posture, which was perfect. Sure. It sounds, anyway. yeah, it sounds normal to me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I understand where you're going with that. So anyway. um, how often a day do you recommend using the back pod? Well, generally, just once a day is enough. That's because what I do. Yeah, the, the 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 tightness is such tough stuff. You're not going to shift it fast anyway. It usually, rule of thumb, says it'll take about three weeks to free up really tight stuff, mostly, um, and it can take longer than that, of course. Um, so, um, th th what we try and do is. Um, uh, is steer people away from doing too much too soon because then they get sore and often they'll give up. Sure. Um, uh, so the instructions generally say, you know, once a day for about 30 seconds in each position, but you're moving the back pod up and down the spine and then out to the side of the spine and you're using it up and down the side of the spine as well, about mm, just under two inches to get the ribs as well. So you, you, you're using it in a variety of positions um, around the um, upper back and rib cage and chasing the tight stuff. Generally speaking, just once a day is enough, but that can take you, you know, a good 10 minutes by the time you've got around each area. Um, the first week's the crucial thing. I mean, with an awful lot of people, the stuff they're trying to free up has been frozen for um, years, not just yes. months and yes. occasionally decades. And it's, it's not going to move fast. So you just keep plugging away, doing enough at a time. Um, definitely we get people who are enthusiastic uh, after the first week. And by that stage, any sort of initial um, treatment tenderness, and it's not a big deal anyway, um, 
uh, from um, starting to, to to move stuff again has sort of more or less settled. And and yeah, you know, you can you can fire it up, uh, use it more than once a day after that. But it's just initially to start with, we we try and hold it back down to um, to once a day. Yeah, my uh, my wife and my wife and I um, will occasionally. Um, like if I'm working at the computer and I feel a little bit of pain, I'll actually go lie on this for a while. Yeah, uh, and it it does give me relief. So yeah, uh, I mean it's, um, not, it's not correcting, you know, but it's it's taking me in the other direction for a bit and giving. Sure, I mean, I, like I use mine the same way. You know, if I've been spending a long time replying to emails and what have you. Sure, um, but my. Um, you know, I'd, I'd probably only use it every couple of weeks or a few weeks sure. because things are pretty good. Once you get them loose enough, then generally they'll stay pretty well, um, you know, in, in, and often with the occasional use of the back pod just to keep them um, ticking over or keep them completely free. Um, but Do you, um, do you think yeah. it's too aggressive, Steve, to uh, actually, I, I got this from, I don't know if you know, Kelly Starrett, he's the author of The Supple Leopard, and yeah. he's a pretty aggressive guy, and, and um, he uses some device in his back, and then he puts a weight on his abdomen to really, right. I, I, I would guess that would maybe a little too aggressive. Um. <laughs> Yeah, look, if it if if the spine is tight enough, then you really do want um, uh, a fair amount of force to um, to to stretch and unlock it. And you know, I sort of busted my knuckles for for years doing manipulations right. on really tough stuff. And it it, it can be, um, uh, you know, in 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 some cases, um, you have to go that hard to actually get the result. But you do pick your patients, and right. um, you don't do this on little old ladies with osteoporosis. Right. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And the problem is, we're we're putting out a um, a, a product for generally across the right. spectrum. Um, uh, uh, there's warnings and everything, but um, um, yeah, one of the I think what you're talking about a bit is um, you can get a bit frustrated when you know it's not quite strong enough to do. Um, what it needs right. uh, to do the last bit that's needed, and and also because of the shape of the um, upper back, the um, the leverage of the back pod drops off on the top two sure. or even three, certainly the, the top couple of vertebrae and um, and and ribs uh, attaching to the vertebrae. So you have got less leverage up those top few, and often. Um, uh, it does need more leverage. In New Zealand, that's when our manual techniques come in. And there's, sure. there's all sorts of mobilizing um, and uh, manipulation techniques. Um, Brian Mudigan's snags, where yes. you, 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 you hold, you're, you're holding onto the, from behind, holding onto yeah. the patient's upper yeah. trapezius, blocking onto um, one of the vertebrae at the spinous yeah. process. And then you get them to move back. Yes. And it's basically you, you're locking one vertebrae while the patient's muscles are then stretching the one above it backwards. Stuff like that has that more leverage again. And I'm trying to get to putting up various videos of those for physical therapists, um, chiropractors, um, sure. um, osteopaths. It is really taking longer than I thought it was going to. Everything um, does. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I should, in all fairness, too, uh, Kelly Starr works with mainly big weightlifters. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's the body type he's working with. Is is, is that a, we're, we're kind of yeah. running out of time here. And I did want to, uh, you, you recommend a, a simple stretch uh, along, yes. along with this. Do you mind describing sure. that or showing that? Sure. Well, look, we, we uh, along with the back pod, um, there's the back pod itself for um, stretching loose and freeing up a, a hunched thoracic spine. <clears throat> but there's all those other little components um, going on. And um, so we, we try to do a very minimalist um, program to cover them. And that, that's in the user guide as well. 
And by the way, this is all the, the, the user guide and all the instructions, including videos, um, is free for anyone to access off the Backpod's New Zealand website. Um, just um, www.backpod.co.nz um, or just Google Backpod. Is, and is that listed in your booklet too? Or? Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, but just, just Google Backpod and I Hunch. Yeah, we'll put it in the comments. But we'll put it below too, so that. Okay. Um, anyway, so um, so these are all there anyway. So what we came up with was the, a very simple little program. Um, try to keep it as short as possible so people could do it. Um, uh, of course, if you're doing more stretches or more strengthening at the gym, this this is all better. But these were just the bare minimum. Um, to to, to um, touch all the bases. Gotcha. So the, the stretch is uh, simply an upper trapezius stretch. Upper trapezius is, you know, as you know, this muscle here um, where you, your shoulder is basically joining onto the base of your neck. Um, and so the stretch is just simply drop the shoulder, take your head sideways um, to one side and pull it down like that. Hold it for about 10 seconds or so. Do the same on the other side. If you haven't got time to do anything else while you're beavering away at the keyboard, this is probably the most useful 10 seconds you can take out of your day. Gotcha. Because the, the upper trapezius are always the, one, uh, the ones where the tightness starts off at. And then the ribs underneath get tight and the hunching comes in. So, so that was just that one single stretch, um, just which you can do any time during the day. You can hold it for longer. Um, you can tilt the head a little bit to, um, to get different um, aspects of the muscle, but it, it's very, very simple. It's just, you, you see people where the shoulders are up around their ears. Okay, well, this is stretching the muscle that does that. Um, so everything loosens up again. Now, you, uh, uh, you recommend that massage could also accompany yes. this. Yeah, yeah I, was going, I was going to mention that. So one other component is... Uh, is massage for the muscles. And massage is just hugely useful. Um, I, I don't know how much they teach it in the US. It's mostly not being taught much in physiotherapy in New Zealand in the schools here, which I think is a, is a, is, is a pity. Sure. Um, because it's so useful. You can stretch muscles, but if you've got a buildup of, of adhesive fibrosis scarring in the muscles, that doesn't really stretch adhesive fibrosis doesn't the best single way of loosening that off is getting talking somebody into bulldozing through those muscle fibers with their fingers um, and all the healthy elastic muscle fibers will stretch as they go through but the the harder stiff little scarring fibers um, will break apart and loosen off which is exactly what you want um, getting scarring in your muscles is a bit like getting paint in your hair. Instead of the hair fibers sliding past each other, the, the paint gums everything up. And it's the same with scarring and muscle fibers. So if you can break down the scarring, plus add in stretching, then you're starting to get back to a, a, a properly flexible, stretchy muscle. And there, there are a couple of um, exercises, uh, sorry, a couple of home massages in the Backpods user guide. They're also as YouTube videos um, on the net. And in fact, they're all on the, um, the iHunch page of the Backpods website. And they're not difficult. Um, uh, one of them is, is sitting at a desk, um, head forward. So all the tight stuff is, um, is already on tension. You've taken up all the slack. And then the person behind your massage buddy works um, up and down through those muscles. It's a little bit like using a rolling pin on, um, on, on pizza sure. dough or something like that. Gotcha. Um, it, it's just really very effective um, and all the way up to the base of the skull because that's where the headaches are coming from. And then there's a, a second one is lying on your side um, and, and it's very specifically for this upper trapezius muscle because that's where the, the, the tightness starts off with with that upper trapezius muscle. So, that, so it's, it's part of what's needed to pull the spine back to what it used to be like and what it should be like. Is the, is the contents of the booklet online too, or is that just in the booklet itself? 
Uh, no, it's um, uh, it's online uh, pretty much, I think, on every page of the Backpods website. Sure. Um, so there's, there's PDFs there of all sorts of stuff, including um, other research and other lectures. Um, so we're trying to set it up as a bit of a resource. Um, but so that's there. Um, oh. You'd also asked me about uh, a couple of strengthening exercises. Yes. They're the last yeah. bit. Yes. And uh, again, keeping it really simple. I mean, nothing beats going to a gym and having a really good tailored program. But for the, for the absolute basics, what you want is strengthening between the shoulder blades and, and the lower shoulder blades. Um, because the upper, upper trapezius muscles are the ones that get tight and strong, but the middle and lower trapezius muscles lower down the back get really weak and loose as, a, um, a, a, as part of that. Um, it's, it's that combination. And you, you can tell this by looking at somebody from behind because you see this winging scapula. You, 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 uh, you, your shoulder blade should sit roughly up and down what what you see with this eye hunch thing is that the um, the top of the shoulder blades are close together, close to the spine at the top because the upper trapezius muscles are so tight. But the ones lower down, the rhomboids and lats and lower trapezius muscles have got weak, so the the, the bottom of the shoulder blades drifts out, and it's it's called a winging scapula, and you you can get it for neurological reasons as well, but it, it's just really common. So the one exercise we've got for that is just um, very simple, lying on your front, um, tucking your chin in, um, holding your hands back um, behind you with a weight, with weights in each one, and hold it for about 10 seconds, do 10 of those. It's, there's various ways of doing this, but this is an easy thing you can do at home. You don't even have to have... Um, proper gym weights, sure. weights to do it. You can just use like a, a in our case, a, a liter bottle um, filled with of an, an old milk bottle filled with water. Um, one liter equals or one even, kilo. Even one start, out, start off with soup cans or. Yeah, all, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and it, again, it's something anyone can do at home. It's not at all difficult. So that's one. The second exercise is the one for the chin poking out. And that's your, your longest coli and deep neck flexors. And even the big gym, serious gym goers need this because they do all the huge big muscles yes. and nobody thinks about doing this. Right. And you see the, these giant um, muscle um, um, bodies, um, but the chin's poking out and it, it just sort yes. of reduces the whole, whole effect. Yeah. Um, so this is a very simple exercise. Again, it's there as, as a video and it's in the user guide. Um, all you're doing is lying on your back, tucking your chin in and just lifting your head only about half an inch centimeter off the ground. And that sounds easy and it's not if, you, if you've got weak on sure. these muscles around the front. And I've, I've, I've had big muscly guys who can't even do it. Uh, it's not just a matter of lifting your head off. It's the chin held in, which means it's using those muscles. Um, and that's the, that's the, that gives you the strength there to then, during your day, hold the chin in automatically. I mean, there's no point telling people to do good posture if they haven't got the muscles to do it. Right. And this is how you get this particular um, muscle. Um, I'll tell you who's good. Um, Chris, Hem, uh, Chris Hemsworth, um, Captain America in the Avengers. Yeah, I, I just saw, I just saw him in a booklet that. Um, uh, yeah. oh, um, well, he's, um, he's he's got you know um, uh, impressive muscles, but it's not, yes, he it's does. not just that. He's also got perfect posture, and they don't all have that. But he's he's a good example of what we're aiming for, you know, somewhere over the horizon. So, right. Yeah. Is he the one that played Thor, I believe? Uh, I'm not sure. I know, uh, yeah. But I, <laughs> yeah. I, I grew up with all of those originally when they were original half. Sure. Um, yeah. Hard copy it's, comics. It's got, very gone a long way. It's, it's got very confusing now. So, 
Well, Steve, I, I always want to be respectful of your time. And, and I'm so glad that you took the time again to uh, meet with us. I always learn something new whenever we meet. And uh, the, the information is so helpful to so many people, um, ex, you know, especially the costic chondritis too, which you need to watch that video if you haven't. Uh, but um, in this, like you said, is a, I don't know if you call it a, you call it a, Tsunami, how what do you call it? Tsunami. 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 I, it, it, it's a New Zealand term from the Pacific. Right, I'm not right. Sure it's used no, in we have it. Tidal we have wave. It. We have it. Right, exactly. And it, it is it. So um, we hope we can help lots of people by through watching this video yeah. and and uh, reading his book and and going to his website and checking things out. So yeah. thanks again, Steve, for joining us. Bob, thank you very much. I, I'm hugely flattered by, and I really appreciate the invitation and best regards to Brad. And look, uh, you guys have just thank been you. wonderful. I'm, I'm so impressed with what you're doing. All right. And likewise, thank you very much. Cheers. Take right. care. See you. Bye-bye.